So, the Japanese New Year cards are starting to come together, basically. Um, at first, it wasn't looking like it was going to be as big as in years past, but it's uh, over the past week and a half or so, um, there have been a lot of fights that have been pretty much confirmed, made, um, signed, sealed, and delivered. And it's looking like it's going to be um, just another hell of a, uh, another hell of a, show, a couple of shows um, for, for New Year's over in Japan. You know, the last few years, as the number of world champions from Japan has increased, um, just the quality of cards has been uh, in, immense and just uh, really, really fun to watch. Um, and in spite of the fact that um, in my previous video, I mentioned that Kazuto Yoka is going to be going out on at the very least a hiatus uh, for the time being. Um, it's looking like, uh, as far as the other fighters are concerned, you know, they're, they're not slowing up. You know, they're looking to, uh, um, kind of, uh, follow on to the path that, uh, Ioka in, in certain ways kind of helped to, uh, to blaze in terms of, um, you know, just raising the, the level of quality of the, the shows, raising the level of awareness and, um, fanfare for, uh, for fighters from Japan and, you know, the whole nine. But, um, I think chief among the fights that have been made um i'll mention some of the other fights uh aside from the main one that this video is going to be the topic of um shoki Mura versus uh the wbo flyweight champion the man who just recently stopped zoshi ming is going to be fighting against former wbc flyweight champion toshiyuki igarashi um igarashi had defeated sunny boy Hado to win that belt that was just after Hado pulled off the huge monumental upset over when over um excuse me uh punk select one young cam who had been a champion for years and years um and then Igarashi wound up losing to Akira Igashi who of course wound up losing to Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez who then of, of course vacated uh his belt and now Daigo Higa has that um so Igarashi's basically been, kind of been plugging away since he lost to Igashi and it was a competitive fight um although a clear decision went for Igashi um and he's pretty much back in the mix and I think it's a pretty even fight between him and uh Kimura um I think Igarashi's probably a little bit of a better boxer but Kimura is just putting on that constant pressure and is a very high volume fighter so I think it's going to be a very interesting matchup between those two um you also have Nagi Inoue um confirmed to be fighting against uh Yohan Boyao of uh France um that should be you know at the very least you know it's, it's another showcase kind of fight for um Nagi Inoue you know in front of his home crowd in Japan um in the midst of his kind of attempting to cross over to the US it seemed like what they're probably going to do with him is kind of go back and forth you know um uh, between having the big shows the big name fights in the US against the likes of possibly Suisa Kent in the future possibly Estrada in the future possibly Quadros in the future possibly even moving up to 118 and fighting the likes of maybe Ryan Burnett, Luis Neri, Yamanaka if he beats Neri, um Zlani Tete in the future but as far as him fighting more of these lesser known guys is most likely going to be done in Japan. So I could see him going US Japan, US Japan, you know, between um his next few fights simply to kind of continuously grow his fan bases um in, on both sides of the coast. Um, and then beyond that, we have uh, Hiroto Kiyoguchi, the IBF minimum weight champion, fighting against uh, Carlos Buitrago. Um, very good fight between those two. Um, you know, Buitrago has been, you know, one of the, one of the top level fighters um, at the lower weight classes uh, the last few years. Uh, you know, just kind of coming up short against Knockout CP Freshmart in a couple of fights. Um, the first one, especially being uh, kind of a controversial decision loss for him, um, got a draw against uh, former WBO champ Merlito Sabio, and so you know he's he's still. Uh, Going at it, you know, still trying to trying to get that championship that has been kind of elusive to him thus far. And I think it's a really good fight between him and uh, Kyoguchi. You know, Buitrago is probably one of the best fighters at the lower weights without a belt. And um, Kyoguchi, honestly, I think may incidentally be the class of the 105-pound division. I think he's a really, really good fighter with a really, really bright future ahead of him. Um, and then the, the chief fight that I really want to talk about in this video, though, is... The light flyweight clash, the unification light flyweight clash between WBA champion Ryoichi Taguchi and IBF champion Milan Melindo. Um, really, really good fight. Uh, originally, this was supposed to be Taguchi facing off against the WBO champion. Um, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm blanking on his name now. Kose Tanaka. Uh, Kose Tanaka wound up actually suffering some 
lingering injuries from his S fight. I, I believe I'm not sure if it was both orbital bones or if it was his his left orbital and then his um his cheekbone that got fractured in his last fight. Very very tough um knockout victory for him, but one where you know he definitely took some damage in there. So he's he's definitely healing up uh, for the time being. And you know he had been looking to unify against Taguchi before. And considering the fact that light flyweight had had. Uh, pretty much dominance of the 108 pound division, so a uh, stranglehold on on the belts there, until Melindo managed to uh, knock out Yagashi. Um, you know, it was looking like you know there was a greater likelihood for unifications to be made because of that. Um, but even though Melindo isn't even from Japan, you know, he's from the Philippines, he stepped up to the plate, stepped up to the table, and decided to unify against Taguchi. Um, originally, I thought he was going to wind up having to rematch Heki Butler, but it looks like um, the IBF decided to kind of give him a bye there, even though they had ordered a rematch between those two. And so, uh, Butler actually may wind up uh, liking this more, because uh, now um, he'll wind up fighting the winner of this fight uh, for two belts, as opposed to rematching Melindo for one. So, I mean... Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll. He's not uh, too um, saddened by the news of of this happening in lieu of him getting his rematch. Um, but this is a really good fight. Really, really good fight. Um, I favor Taguchi in the fight. Uh, I think his higher work rate, his higher pace, and the fact that I mean he he just. He, he throws with pretty good power, too. Um, he's not necessarily an outright knockout artist, but he is the type of fighter that if he catches you early, clean, he can get you out of there. Um, Melindo is very much the same way. I mean, as I mentioned before, he has a first-round knockout over Akira Yagashi. Um, you know, definitely the probably the premier victory of any fighter at 108 pounds. Um, probably one of the best wins to uh, to for any fighter to have been able to come across, basically, the last couple of years. Um even though, I mean, you could argue that, you know, he just kind of caught Yagashi cold. Yagashi has had some weight troubles recently. Um, and he hadn't been looking that quite as good, uh, as effective as in the past. Um, but still, you know, you got you to gotta give credit to Melindo for, for doing the damn thing and getting him out of there. Um, Melindo definitely has good power, good counter-punching ability. Um, the other, but, you know, I, I just favor Taguchi in this matchup. I, th- I think that um, the consistency... Between the two of them, really kind of favors Taguchi, and it seems like Taguchi really has more difficulty with guys who are constantly on the move. Guys that are kind of like you know, boom, boom, out of there, boom, boom, out of there. You know, just like landing, throwing one or two shots at a time and getting out, and you know, trying to force Taguchi to reset himself. It's really when Taguchi is able to kind of get you um, at mid range and, and get into a rhythm. He's a very tall fighter for for the weight class, five six and change, um, very long reach. Uh, that's where he really shines. You know, when he's able to kind of get off those four or five punch combinations on you is where, you know, he, he really shows his skill in his class. Um, so really Melindo, it would be, it would, I think, favor him to be a lot more of a stick and move type fighter. Not unlike actually he, the way that he fought against, uh, Hecky Butler. You know, I actually thought that worked really well for him. Um, he was able to kind of utilize distance well against Butler. And even though I thought that Butler could have maybe nicked that fight, against Melindo, um, he was very effective in making kind of Butler come to him, which Butler, te- he, he tends not to really like to do. You know, he, he likes for fighters to kind of come to him and for him to be more of that counter puncher and to kind of spin him on an axis and really constantly turn them. Um, but Melindo did uh, pretty well fighting off the back foot there. Um, you know, he's a, he's a very well-versed fighter. I, I just think the one main flaw with Melindo, aside from the fact that um, he he has his own struggles making weight as, as he has in the past. You know, he even fought uh, Juan Francisco Estrada at 112 pounds, which I think is more of a natural weight to him. He's missed weight a couple of times as well. Um, is the fact that I think his work rate maybe possibly suffers in lieu of the fact that he has some has a tough time making weight. So it's like he's he's not really a high output fighter. It's like he's trying to make um he's trying to make individual or maybe th- up to three punch combinations really count and re- he's really putting a lot of bomb ass on those punches. He's really putting his weight into them when he throws those shots. Um whereas Taguchi, you know, he'll he'll throw some throwaway punches and like he he'll throw that those the first two will be kind of more kind of soft slappy punches and then the the three, four and five will be those hard, really um well leveraged uh, potential like hurting blows or getting ready to to knock you out, um, as he's managed to do recently against um, Robert Barrera, um, in which I I thought was going to be a more even fight than it was. Taguchi just teed off on the guy, <laughs> pretty pretty nasty knockout there. Um, and then it's kind of unfortunate for um, Carlos Canizales because it looked like he was going to be getting a rematch at Taguchi. Uh, considering the fact that the Tanaka fight wasn't going to be happening, um, so I do feel for uh, Carlos Canizales. You know, he 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 ran uh, Taguchi to a um, split decision, 
uh, last year, last um, December 31st. And so, you know, he he's definitely deserves his opportunity. You know, him and, him and Hecky Butler broke. Maybe the two of them could fight each other. I think that's uh, about as good of a, of a matchup as you can get between two fighters, two top-level contenders without belts. Um, I think that would be actually a really good fight between those two. Um, and uh, they approach the sport in a pretty similar fashion, too. Kind of is very much a stick-and-move type fighter. Um, Butler, you know, he I think he, he throws, um, he's, he's a little bit of a higher work rate in comparison uh, a little bit more of like that constant perpetual motion um with, with his style but i think uh the two of them would blend to make a, a very interesting kind of technical boxing match more of a chess match type type fight with um taguchi and melindo i think it's going to be a, a bit more uh, a little bit more power and um you know i think i think it's going to be a physical fight between these two um i think uh technically speaking they count they cancel each other out enough um, to the extent where you know they're they're going to be throwing some bombs at each other, you know Benlindo is definitely going to be um, looking to to counter. I think Taguchi's you know constant work rate with very very heavy handed shots, and Taguchi's going to be looking to um, set up his heavy shots with um, with his high uh, work rate. You know, remember when he fought Juan Jose Landeta, threw over a hundred punches around in that fight all the way leading up until when he managed to stop Landeta in the eleventh round. Um, so this is a really good fight between these two. Um, you know, uh, the, the New Year's cards in Japan haven't left me, haven't been letting me down recently, and it looks like they're not going to this time. And it, uh, originally, originally, look, it, it appeared like it might, considering the fact that Tanaka was injured, um, Yoko was on the brink of you know possibly retiring at the very least. He vacated his belts. Um, wasn't sure if Inoue was going to hold off all the way until the Superfly Two card in in February, which is likely to feature um, Three Sakhet versus Juan Francisco Estrada in the main. Um, and then, you know, Ryota Mirata, since he managed to uh, uh, avenge the loss to Hassan and Dam and uh, get his title belt, you know, he wasn't going to be making an appearance, it looked like, um, for New Year's this year. But I think um, the other champions have managed to kind of uh, pull up ranks and, um, you know, get get these fights made, man. Really good fights. Um, Igarashi versus Kimura is a good fight. Buitrago versus uh, Kyoguchi is a great fight. Um, Taguchi versus Melindo is a fantastic fight. To me, that's that's the fight. That's the fight. Like if you're only gonna, um, you know, check out on YouTube after the fights have occurred, of course, because you know, um, especially for all my stateside viewers, you know, these fights are gonna be happening <laughs> at the brink of dawn, even before dawn, um, the middle of the night. You know, um, Taguchi versus Melindo is is the fight to watch. You know, it's a fantastic fight with a lot of implications for the near future um, at the lower weight classes. You know, see uh, uh, one one of these one of the two of these guys, or or possibly both, uh, may have uh, implications for just not not even for the near future of the division, but even for in terms of uh, potential all time great status or pound for pound status, and at some point in the future as well, um, with the, the likelihood of uh, further unifications happening once Tanaka gets healed back up, and uh, potentially even we may be looking at an undisputed champion at 108 pounds um within the next say like year and a half i'd say um i, I could definitely see it happening considering um these guys have been constantly fighting each other so um everything's looking great for the for the light flyweight division you know it's uh, it's almost as as exciting to um see the the, the future kind of turn out as is uh, the super flyweight division albeit maybe on a slightly less less uh fanfare scale because you know the super flyweight division of course has a lot more um Attention on it, thanks to uh, Chocolatito, thanks to Estrada, thanks to Sri Saket, thanks to Nai Inoue. Um, you know, the, the 108 pound division is almost like the underground height. You know, it's like these guys kind of battling for position to try and be, become that next uh, potential star uh, that can cross over a bit more internationally, worldwide. So, that's going to do it for this one. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.